Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday. And we are in the last days. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to start reading. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, mm. disobedient to parents. Does that sound familiar? Thank, unthankful, unholy, well, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. Now, you know, for those of you who don't know what incontinence is, people in the health industry, they know. It means you don't have control over your bladder or your bowels. Well, when the Bible talks about incontinence, it means you don't have control over that mouth of yours. You don't have control over that attitude, and you don't have control over that temper, let alone your behavioral patterns. Okay, moving right along. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. You notice how... In elementary school, bad kids hate the good kids. The kids that want to do their studies, that want to stay out of trouble, that mind their own business. The bad kids are always meddling with them, aren't they? I wonder why. All right. Um, <laughs> Despisers of those that are good. Verse 4. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Boy, do we have some arrogance in this day and age. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And you know what cracked me up in verse 2 when it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. What is a perfect title for that sentence right there? Selfie! Go to Facebook. You'll see just what I'm talking about. Whew, talk about self-worship to the max. All right. Now, let's go to verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Mm -hmm. So this is what I want to share with you on that. We are in these last days. We know that. Even people who don't believe in Jesus know that. I mean, that's pretty much common knowledge especially when you see how downhill society is going right now. But my question to you is, what are you going to do about it? Because these days ain't going to last forever. Now, some of you, like my big sister, Lynn, and like Peter, are out serving God, ministering to people whenever they can, whenever the opportunity shows itself, they apply what they've learned and pour into other people's lives. They bless people. And you know, when your life is all about yourself, you become like an ingrown toenail. You know what happens to ingrown toenails, don't you? They start getting inflamed, tender, sore, swollen, infected. Mm. So, when you look at a lot of born-again Christians out there whose lives are stagnant, their attitude looks like it's getting inflamed, swollen, and infected, doesn't it? So we have to be careful not to be all about ourselves going through these last days. We have to be careful not to be caught up with me and my four and no more. Because there's a world out there that needs more than just what entertainment is giving them. They need everlasting more. You hear what I'm saying? And if you're about that, then you need to be sharing it. If you're not about it, you need to be seeking it. Because I'm telling you, I've been out there in them streets. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make it plain. Ain't nothing out there worth dying for. Nobody out there worth dying for. Nothing that you did, do, or want to do is worth dying for. And when I say dying, I mean perishing. I mean not only your body dying or dying before it's time or deteriorating because of your lifestyle. 
It's also not worth dying for an eternal damnation. You don't want that either. So let's look at the positive side of walking with the Lord. Let's look at what we can be doing during these last days. I do want to point out a few things. You will notice certain things increasing as time goes on. And I'm going to read that with uh, verse four, uh, 13 in the same chapter says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, and, excuse me, worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So whatever you do, make sure that you stay in, in the way of God, because that will be your buckler, your shield, your raincoat, your boots, your covering, your protection, going through the, the uh, vicissitudes of these last days. So as you notice, when you look at what's going on, for those of you who may have your heads in the sand or so far up the canal of these cell phones as you worship yourself, you may not really know what's happening. But these are the last days. And when you see people who are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God, they're lovers of themselves more than loving each other, you will find that people will turn to treachery they will pat you on the back one day with one hand. And once they get out of you what they want because they're all about themselves, they will basically stab you in the back with the other hand. And they will say, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya, while they tiptoe down the road. And you're standing there feeling abandoned, betrayed, misled, lied to, used and played and now you got to lick your wounds because you put your trust in the wrong place and see in these day and age in this day and age a lot of us you'll find a lot of people are very needy you know we hate that word needy because needy sounds like weakness but see i don't care about the word weakness that's not the point needy is a person who needs friends, a person who needs company, a person who needs pats on the back, who needs compliments all the time, who needs somebody to tell them how wonderful they are. They It's like a woman who can't go a day without a man in her life or a man who can't he can't be divorced for two weeks without looking for another woman to take that wife's place. Why? They're needy. When you can't live on your own, when you can't be self-sustained and be about productive things, be about positive things, you will end up being a needy person. We used to call it the octopus syndrome. There are people out there in these last days that will suck the life out of you if you let them. So this is a time when things get worse, things get more intense, things get more foul, and you have to guard your heart, your mind, your body, your health, your, 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 your whole life. You have to guard everything that you treasure in your life because if you don't guard it, Somebody else will trash it. And if you're not paying attention, someone will yank your life right out from under you because you're so busy trying to be Mr. or Mrs. Nice Guy. So they'll like you because you're needy and you don't know it. You position yourself precariously where you are off balance. You're you're out of sync, you're, you're, you're an accident, you're a disaster waiting to happen because you have put yourself at other people's disposal. You have put yourself at other people's mercy. People who don't love, but use instead of love. 
people who don't care, but they will they will do whatever they can to get over on you for, for the sake of themselves at your expense. And you're around here trying to be like loved, appreciated, valued. Baby, you better ask God to help you value yourself because some of the people you're looking for to value you, they are a waste of time at this point in your life. They cannot add an inch to your height. They cannot add a measure to your stature. They can't add anything to your character because you're looking for love in all the wrong places. And on top of looking for love in all the wrong places, you're looking for the living among the dead. That's what a lot of people do. Look for the living among the dead. So I want you to think about how you're going through these last days. What are you doing with yourself? What responsibilities are you taking on for yourself? Hmm? What are you doing with your character? Are you nurturing your relationship with God or do you have none whatsoever? Do you not even believe in him? And if you don't, I'm not going to argue the point. I know in whom I believe. I've had a lot of experiences and my invisible God has proven himself more than the visible people I've known down through the years. So I'm not going to argue with you because it takes God to convince you. That's not my job. All I can do is plant the seed. So what I pray is that you will consider or reconsider getting close to God. Reconsider that because in these last days, you're going to need him more than you've ever needed him before. See, God will warn you. God will equip you. When something's getting ready to come down the pike, God will have someone in position to supply you with what you need to handle what's coming. If something's getting ready to come to, I remember years ago, here's an example. Years ago, Pastor Benjamin Reed had a church service in the, in midweek. I think it was midweek or or that Sunday afternoon and or Sunday morning. I'm not sure what hour, but the bottom line is a woman was given a word. Now, this is where the spiritual gifts come into play, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. See, we have a lot of benefits walking with the Lord, including protection, warning, Covering all of that direction, instruction, provision, healing, a lot of benefits, y'all. Now check it out. Not only having a relationship with him. All right, now check this out. So they have the church service and this woman stands up. She has word in tongues. Now, what the word was, the woman, the one who had the interpretation told the pastor, that God had warned everyone to leave early that day. Hmm, leave early, leave church early? That's strange, why? Because they're going to have riots and violence in the streets. He wants everybody to go in their homes and stay there. Well, guess what? That night, the Watts riots broke out. When you have God in your life, you don't have to call a psychic hotline, baby. You got it straight from the horse's mouth. He knows all. He knows your past, your present, your future. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Life is not a mystery to him. You are not a mystery to him, even if you're a question mark to yourself. If you don't have a clue who you are or what you're here for or what you're about, guess who has all those answers? So it does behoove you to take a little time and get to know the creator of your soul. In the meantime, while you're going through these last days, get in the word and read it. You'll start to see some road signs and you will realize God is not only informative, He's also what I call a traffic cop. 
He will direct you. He'll show you the signs on the road, the signs of the times. He'll show you the writing on the wall and you will not be caught off guard. You will be well prepared, well equipped and ready for whatever comes in every way because you serve a risen savior. Now, my question to you is, will you serve him? Will you allow him to make something beautiful out of your life? Or will you allow your life to remain the wreck that it is because you're too proud to say you need any kind of supernatural help or you're too proud or too arrogant to think that you even need a God of any kind? That's my question to you. Amen? All right. So for those of you who do believe Get in your word. Read Revelations. The book of Revelations is promised blessings for reading it. It didn't say you had to understand it, but read it. Read the book of Daniel. You will see the connection, the correlation between the two. You will start finding as you read the word, you'll see God's heart. Read the book of Psalms. When you need comfort in your hour of need, let God comfort you in the book of Psalms. I'm telling you, the Bible is loaded with God's love. It's loaded with his care, with his compassion for you. When somebody hurt my feelings years ago, and I knew nothing about the Bible, I had only been saved about a month. I came home crying. And when I sat on the couch, I said, Lord, lead me to scripture. And I saw Psalms chapter seven, plain as day. And when I opened it, it said, Lord, I'm paraphrasing, Lord, help me, lest they tear me like a lion, rending me in pieces. I mean, you could hear the emotional pain, the anguish that David was writing about. And what God will do is lead you to scripture that reflects exactly what you're feeling to show you how he knows more than you do what you're feeling and why. And he's right there to heal it. After I got through going from scripture to scripture to scripture, God literally used the words I was reading to dry my weeping eyes. And the emotional pain was gone in less than a half an hour. I said, wow, God wiped my eyes. He removed the emotional pain. It behooves us to stick close to God. And the darker it gets, baby, you better be all up under his armpits. Because where God is, is light. You do not want to grope in the dark during these last days. Trust me on that one. Amen? All right. That's my quick word for the day. Draw close to God and let him light your pathway. And you will not be lost in the sauce. No matter what happens. God bless you. Amen.